perhaps this can mean that the IPO window is starting to open. Uh, this is a bit of, I guess, a warning uh, message out to less experienced investors. You really need to be a little bit more cautious when reading the announcement titling. Hello, investors, and welcome to yet another 180 Markets Weekly Wrap. Armed and dangerous. Why do I use that expression? Well, last night in the US, ARM, A-R-M is the ticker, was the biggest tech IPO in about two years. But even more than that, the stock closed up 30% on its debut. And while this is one data point, perhaps this can mean that the IPO window is starting to open. Now, to be clear, it's just one data point, and ARM is a very specific company operating in the AI space with some huge customers, including NVIDIA. So it's just one point again, but it is a positive data point. And along with the CPI coming in last night, a little bit higher, but at the same time, recipients were pretty responsive to this news. It was a little bit better than probably the whisper numbers would indicate. Now here at 180 Markets, again, these are just a couple of data points, but perhaps these are clues that we could potentially have a strong end of the year rally. Early days here, but something we are watching. And now to turn it over to Sean for went on for the week. Well, actually, it's not Sean this week. It is Simon stepping in. So Sean is very worried about the game tonight with Melbourne. So he is lying at home at the moment in a fetal position. He's sweating a lot. He can't string a sentence together. So some of us have had to step in and step up and take over. So uh, it's been a tough week on the market. As Greg said, it's great to see some small spotlights happening in the um, IPO side of things, but it has still been tough. Um, so we're gonna talk through some of the placements from this week and I'm gonna control Sean's kit here. So first is TMX. Um, so TMX raised uh, 785K in total. Um, that was at an offer price of 0.45 with split option terms. So they're looking at using the proceeds for the company's Smokebush, Golden Lithium and Lort River Rare Earths projects. So Select 180 Markets investors actually got access to this deal on the weekend, which was prior to the halt on Monday. So if anyone is interested um, in having similar access as that, um, and you uh, weren't offered early access this week, please get in touch with one of the team. You can email uh, info at 180markets.com.au and uh, chat to the team about how you can get early access to some deals like that. So second one uh, we'll look at is RDM. Okay, so RDM was a four and a half million dollar placement and rights issue, uh, both at 8.5 cents um, with a one for two 13 uh, 13 cent option. Um, the funds used uh, to initiate percussion chip leach tests on the recent Sabella REO discovery. So Sabella got the market extremely excited last month, which we can see um, here in the charts where the share price ran from six cents, seven cents range, um, all the way up to uh, four and a half cents. Um, next one we'll look at SLB. Um, which is a $2 million placement at uh, $0.30 cents per share. Um, so Cadman was lead manager on this and Can Accord was uh, co-managing that with them. Um, so the, the placement was for use of proceeds for the Trident Lithium project. Um, that project was acquired in February this year. And interestingly, the share price was around uh, $0.15 cents before acquisition. So that got the market uh, very excited when news of that came through. So that's a high grade rock chip um, assays uncovered so far and inaugural drilling in Q4. So it's pretty exciting. Um, so that was originally a 20 cent IPO and it's one of the few IPOs that's been a great performer so far this year. Uh, so we'll now look at uh, one more, which is um, FBM. Um, so that went out to raise a minimum of $4 million at 10 cents per share. And they announced today they actually have raised $7.6 million, including a $2.65 million investment from Hancock Prospecting. So um, Can Accord were the lead manager on that as well. So might move across to uh, the big ups and downs from this week. So we'll start off with the ups. Um, so first one we'll talk about is uh, C&W. So uh, Atura, which is ATA, 
um, is acquiring CNW at 5.3 cents per share. So it's interesting that CNW uh, is trading above this acquisition price at the moment, and both companies are now halted. So that probably means you can infer that there's going to be an amendment on that price at some stage um, in the near future. Uh, next up, we'll look at is CXU. Um, no real news here. However, uranium spot price is very strong and gaining momentum and trending towards $70. So the company has been road showing and they're also expecting results um, from their Melrose nickel copper project early next week. So it's having a bit of a run off those. Um, next one we'll look at, AGE. Um, again, no specific news here, but AGE has uranium projects in South Australia, um, Northern Territory and Italy. And the recent appreciation in the uranium price has got um, a few of the uranium stocks as we've seen um, moving up um, heavily this week. So we can see that in the chart there. Okay, um, another one we'll look at um, in the ups is NIS. So on Tuesday, um, it was announced that um, AKE technical collaboration with them on the lithium project at Carlinup. Um, under the guidance of AKA's lithium geologists, NIS is to undertake additional rock chip sampling and stream sediment sampling to refine high priority lithium target areas. So AKA's Mount Caitlin um, lithium operations produced 131 kilotons of spodumene concentrate in FY 2023 and announced four to five year mine life extension via open pit methods and have commenced studies as well for an underground mining option also. Um, we'll look at OZM next. Um, OZM today announced acquisition of a Brazilian lithium project. So the project is strong spodumene grades of up to 7.36% lithium. There's been no lithium exploration within the project area previously. So the term sheet gives the company the exclusive rights to conduct uh, due diligence. And if it's, uh, the due diligence is satisfied, um, it will be granted an option to acquire the project at 800,000 US dollars. Um, that'll be paid in cash and over 24 month installments. So over installments over those 24 months. So it opened today at 9.4 cents and already has hit a high of 12 and a half cents. Um, so it's currently trading 200 percent or above yesterday's close. Uh, next one we'll look at is uh, SI6. So again, no news here. Um, they've got projects in Botswana and a potential Brazilian project subject to shareholder approval. Um, the right to acquire a joint venture interest in Lithium Valley Geochem program, uh, which is a host to the largest lithium resources in Brazil. So um, that's probably uh, the good news stocks uh, that we wanted to highlight for the week. Uh, just a few that were um, big movers in the wrong direction. Uh, FRE, so phase three trial results on Wednesday for Firebrick Farama's common cold trial came out. The analysis showed the trial did not meet its primary endpoint, uh, which is clearly a negative result. And that's upset the market there quite a lot. And we can see that um, very clearly in the response here on the chart. So the, the stock closed 81% down on Wednesday after the announcement, and uh, that continued to fall on Thursday as well. LNR, it's another one that's had a big tumble this week. Thursday released um, so-called outstanding REE results, which were clearly not actually outstanding. So uh, this is a bit of, I guess, a warning uh, message out to less experienced investors you really need to be a little bit more cautious when reading the announcement titling. It's really important that you do read some more of the detail and get an understanding of what's actually uh, within the announcement itself, um, because often the announcement titling uh, can be very uh, subjective and not be quite outstanding as um, the titling seems to indicate. And one more we'll cover for the week, which is WC8, um, another Tumblr this week. Um, that uh, doubles WC8 on Monday. They announced a new director, which is Ajant Savaramitu. Um, it fell 16% on Monday and then 18% on Tuesday. So on Wednesday, they ended a trading halt regarding uh, material exploration results. And today they're actually in voluntary suspension as we can see here 
on Iris here. So it will be interesting to see what they announce when they return to trade, but uh, clearly some um, troubles are there in terms of um, how they've been tracking um, this week. So that's it um, from the weekly wrap this week. Um, if you uh, like Simon's weekly wrap, please feel free to share the feedback, always welcome. Hopefully um, it's a great game tonight. Um, Sean won't be hoping for a great game. He'll just be hoping for results. But from my perspective, I'm just gonna sit down and enjoy both teams punch it out and looking forward to the pies next Friday night who are sitting there waiting in a prelim. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thanks for watching another 180 Markets Weekly Wrap. If you want access to thousands of capital raises, sign up at 180markets.com.au and you'll get access to our very next capital raise. Thanks for watching.